Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to concentrate on the acceleration vector. How do we get the acceleration vector? Well, that depends upon how you want to express the acceleration vector. We can do it via the x and y components. Here, we're still in two dimensions. So if we start with the position vector, we have a function that depends on the parametric variable t in the i direction, plus a function that depends on the parametric variable t in the j direction, the x and the y direction. We take the derivative of each of these components, and now we get the velocity vector. We take a second derivative, and now we get the acceleration vector. But the acceleration vector is expressed in terms of the acceleration in the x direction plus the acceleration in the y direction. Quite often, we want to express the acceleration not in terms of the x and y direction, but in terms of being parallel or perpendicular to the curve along which the particle moves. So therefore, we need to convert that into a parameter that is along the, along the curve, that would be tangent to the curve, and a parameter which is perpendicular to the curve, normal to the curve. We do that as follows. First of all, we define the acceleration as the derivative with respect to time of the velocity vector. So we can take the ddt out, so the ddt of the velocity vector, and now we're going to use this as the velocity vector, which is the expression we found in the previous video. We're going to take the ddt of the ds dt, which is the speed at which we move along the curve, times the tangent unit vector. So if you do that, remember here we have a product, so we need to use the product rule. So it's the first times the derivative of the second, plus the second times the derivative of the first. Of course, the derivative of the ds dt is the second derivative with respect to time. Then we're using the following conversion. Instead of writing dd, dt, dt, this is the unit tangent vector. With respect to time, we want to do it with respect to s. So we write as ddts times ds dt. Notice here, if we get rid of the s's, we get back what we started. But now at least we have the derivative of the unit tangent vector with respect to s moving along the curve. Now we also see that we have a ds dt times the ds dt, so we have ds dt quantity squared. So we come over here, we have ds dt quantity squared times the derivative of the unit tangent vector with respect to s. We still, of course, have the second derivative of, of s with respect to t times the tangent unit vector. Now we have to remember back a few videos where we realized that dt ds, the derivative with respect to s of the tangent unit vector, can be expressed in terms of the curl times the normal unit vector. And if we do that, if we replace dt ds by this, we can now write this term right here as the, cur as the curl times the square of ds dt times the normal unit vector, plus we still have the second component right here, which is the second derivative of s with respect to t times the tangent unit vector. Now, we have to realize that this is not a component which is perpendicular to the motion along the curve. We call that the centripetal acceleration. And this is the motion along the curve, so we call this the tangent acceleration. Motion, actually, I should have called it acceleration. So this here represents acceleration perpendicular to the motion along the curve. This represents acceleration tangent to the motion on the curve. And so now, instead of having the acceleration expressed in terms of the x direction, and the y direction, we have it in terms of the perpendicular to the curved direction and the tangent to the curved direction. And so now we have two different ways in which we can express acceleration. And now we can also see how we go from one to the other. And that's how it's done.